Steffi, I know we're waiting, but that goat looks perfect over your shoulder. <laughs> I think everybody can hear us, just so you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> He's very interested in what we're gonna, what you guys are talking about. So, waiting to hear what goat cheeses you're gonna do. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get started. I can see people are still coming in, but. Uh, I am going to get started because we have lots of cheese and some chocolate to talk about today. So. Uh, hi, I am Stephanie Skinner from Culture Media and welcome to Counterculture. Today's presentation comes to us from Mi Froma, who for more than 50 years has been a Gruyere ripener and more recently an exporter of a variety of Swiss cheeses and lucky us, chocolate fondue. Our presenters, Jim Basta and Edouard Pirats, I think I said that right. You did are both seasoned professionals and they are looking forward to your questions and comments. They will be presenting a PowerPoint and a video and they will walk us through a tasting. So please have your cheeses out, take them out now if you haven't done so already. And uh, we will be tasting them together. So don't gobble them all up before we even get there. So before we get started, I wanna mention a few housekeeping notes. The presentation should be in speaker view mode automatically, but if not, please put it in speaker view. There is a Q&A button on either the top or the side of your screen. Actually, I think it's also on the bottom sometimes. Please post questions and comments there. I will be reviewing them as we go along and I will ask them as appropriate. If we don't get to your questions today, the presenters will happily respond to you directly afterwards. You can also use the chat function, which I do monitor. We love your insight and, and participation. These virtual presentations are for you. So please don't be shy. Tell us about your pairing suggestions and recipes, favorite cheese moments, et cetera. And all questions are good questions. So please ask away. So let's get started. Here are Jim and Edward. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you very much for the introduction and good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to, to having you and to be able to host the virtual contact virtual counter um, event. Uh, my name is Edward. I'm the EVP for me for my USA and I've been working for the company for 11 years. Um, I'm out of Switzerland and I recently joined the US entity almost two years ago. Happy to be part of the event. I'm Jim Basta. I've been with me from uh, 11 years, but I've been selling cheeses from Switzerland for uh, over 30 years. So. Thank you for having us today. This should be a, a fun experience. Well, let me share the presentation. Hopefully you can all see it. Um, and again, well, welcome to the event. Um, in order to start, I'll start with a few words, but just, yeah. Few basics about cheeses from Switzerland before going a bit more into details about Mifroma and tell you some fact and numbers and what, what makes Switzerland so, so famous and historical about cheeses. Uh, so Switzerland is a pretty small country uh, and 80% of this country is mountainous landscape, uh, which means it's only suitable for agriculture, cause breeding, uh, and cannot be used for any industrial purpose. And that's what historically has made Switzerland famous about its cheeses. So if you want to put that in uh, perspective, if you take the state of Oregon, Switzerland is half of that size. And yet 80% of that is mountainous landscape. So it's a very small country. It is. And because of that mountainous landscape, <clears throat> uh, we do have still very traditional and small dairy farm exploitations, where the average amount of cost per farm is 23, according to last year. Um, and that also the main reason why most of our cheeses, if not all, are still raw milk cheeses. Um, that entire 
dairy agricultural activities represent a total of seven millions, sorry, seven billions of pounds of milk per year produced. And back in the time, the, the only way to store that much amount of milk was to convert that into cheeses. So out of seven billion of liter, or sorry for my conversion, I would say 1.8 billion gallons of milk, 40% of it is transformed into cheeses. That represents a yearly production of 400 millions of pounds of cheese. Uh, from there, a third is converted into a hard cheese and a third semi-hard, semi-soft cheese. That makes still a lot of cheeses. However, uh, Switzerland is also a bit known sometimes for its nationalism, which is also true in its cheese consumptions, because 70% of all this cheese quantity is consumed in Switzerland. And that gives us only 30% uh, to, to be exported to several international markets. So that's a very brief uh, insights about why Switzerland famous and historically known um, into cheeses. I'll, I'll now say a few more words about Mifroma and, and who we are. The company started uh, in 1964. <clears throat> so we, we we're going to celebrate our 57th uh, year's birthday and anniversary this year. The, the way Mifroma started 57 years ago was the founder of the company was looking for a place to store all the cheese he was using for his stores. And um, in this year, 64s, like they were old sandstone carriers who were stopping its activities. And he thought that would be the perfect spot to store cheeses into some natural cellars at a pretty low cost because of uh, constant aging and stocking environment. That's how me from our started. Um, <clears throat> and nowadays, 50, 57 years later, uh, we or may know, we're still not a cheese maker ourselves, but our main know how is really to, to select and mature the cheese and guarantee the development of its flavors, of its intrinsequal properties, taste, and yeah, flavors mainly over the aging process. You like you could see behind me, uh, those cellars got bigger and bigger over the years and <clears throat> without any single additional energies, it enabled, it enabled us to keep constantly a standard and constant temperatures of 12 degrees, 35 Fahrenheit, uh, and a constant humidity level between 92, 96% which are the perfect condition every ripeners would be looking for to age smeared ripe cheese. Uh, we, we used to, so the claim of Mifroma remains made for Fromager Suisse. Uh, and we, we do stand for, for the selection of the best cheese maker and their cheeses. All of our cheeses are grass fed, GMO free, no additive, it's prohibited by the Swiss law, 100% natural, and we do guarantee and respect a unique cave aging know-how. Mifroma over the years become more and more committed to sustainability. Uh, we've been the first gas neutral cheese plant in Switzerland two years ago. And also we try to, to repent and communicate more and more about what we stand for. All the stories we, we try to carry are true stories and human stories behind. Um, what set us apart is we do work exclusively with 29 Gruyere cheese dairies. They're all at least a second family generation Gruyere cheese dairies. <clears throat> Our global capacity in the, in the cave is 100,000 wheels of Gruyere, which are stored constantly, which represent roughly 700 wheels per day, took out, taken out, and brought in. Uh, it is the highest natural cave in Switzerland. And although our category remained a very traditional cheese category, uh, we try and, and commit ourselves to remain innovative and disruptive. Mifroma has been the first to bring in the US portions, Gruyere portions cut out of Switzerland and out of the wheels, so in, in this wedge shape. 
Um, a few years later, we've been the first to bring sliced raclette to the US market. Three years, late, three years ago, we brought Shredded Cup of Gruyere, and more recently, the Rosette Tedum one, which we will see afterwards are just small flowers shaved out of a wheel of Tedum one. Every single production lot and Gruyere lot is tasted at least three times before leaving our cave by your, by your master cheesemaker, one time at the cheese dairy before it enters our caves, one time during the affinage and ripening process to make sure it keep evolved consistently and according to expectation, and a third time before we do convert and take it out of the cellars to the appropriate and what we estimate being the perfect maturation degree level. We'll, we'll display a small movie. We just rephrase or emphasize a bit what I was just telling with me from us. Switzerland has been known as the land of cheese forever. We produce more than 450 different types of cheese. Some say even more than 650. It's true that every milk producer and every cheesemaker is proud of maintaining our cheese making tradition, repeating the same processes and using the same methods as their ancestors did. Cheese is part of our culture and is one of the most important and successful ingredients used daily to enrich our meals. We believe that cheese lovers value authentic products and look for the best taste experience possible. For almost 60 years, Mifroma has taken pride in being part of this very traditional industry. We get up every day to supply products that people will enjoy together. While cheesemakers prize the best Swiss milk, crafting it into cheese using their own recipe and selection of bacteria, our mongers care for every selected wheel in one of our sandstone caves carved deep into the mountainside of the Swiss villages of Ursi and Reichenbach. Those natural grottos provide an exceptional environment in terms of temperature and humidity for developing cheese with strong character and flavor. All of our cheese is produced in tiny village dairies. All of them are managed as a family business employing three to five people. Milk is supplied by farmers, collected daily, and processed within 24 hours, sometimes less. Every cheesemaker works with dozens of local milk producers, all with very small herds, in average composed of only 23 cows. Barns are mostly located near or in the villages, and cows graze just next to them. Believe it or not, each cow has its own name, and farmers recognize each animal as normal people do with their pets. Breeding conditions are optimal, sustainable, and follow all recommendations for animal well-being. We are extremely sensitive to cows' welfare and are convinced that it is a necessity to get the best quality milk and paramount to produce a flavorful cheese. Our cheeses are made using extensive craftsmanship in accordance with proud Swiss traditions. Fresh cheese is pressed and immersed in salty water for several hours. It is already at this stage that the curd begins to form. Fresh wheels are transferred to cellars and washed daily during the next two weeks. Here, each wheel soaks up the dairy sole that makes it unique. Alive, the cheese begins its journey that will take months till maturation. The quality of the care that mongers give to the cheese impacts the full ripening process. Each wheel is inspected on a regular basis and selected by our maitre fromager to meet our customers' expectations. Only the best wheels are transferred to our cave to perfect the ripening. Mifroma takes pride in being firmly rooted in our local community. We are located in the heart of the Gruyere region, where cheesemaking is the most valuable heritage. This part of Switzerland is home to our dairy, our farmers, our cheesemakers, our affineurs, our staff, and many of our loyal customers. We are more than 270 people who take pride in selecting and conditioning cheese of the highest quality. And we take on the responsibility for ensuring good jobs for everyone 
with healthy and safe workplaces for our employees. It's here in the cave carved in the mountain that we cure our cheeses. All of our monitors, cheesemakers, and all our other employees do their daily job with passion and engagement. And we all have one common goal, that each wheel get to perfect maturation and taste. Proud cheese enthusiasts, Swiss in our heart, soul, and mind, we strive to bring the Swiss artisanal excellence to food lovers all around the world. The know-how of our maitre fromagers guides our gesture. Artisans with experience in both the century-old art of cheese making and innovative production technologies, they select and cure the very best wheels of cheese until they reach optimum maturation, resulting in a rich, distinct, and characteristic taste experience you just won't get from a seller. To be exported, we cut and wrap each cheese in our high-tech conditioning lab located just next to our cave. Together with our suppliers, we invest to improve our wrapping lines, to reduce plastic thickness, and avoid food waste. We are deeply aware of our responsibilities and seek to lead from the front in the pursuit of better animal welfare and sustainable food production so that we can supply our products to more than 30 countries with a clear conscience from farm to fork. Our selection of cheese is extensive, ranging from the finest AOPs to rare specialties. Our mission is to bring the best of the Swiss cheesemaking tradition to tables around the world using a unique process of selection, maturation, packaging, and distribution. Overseen by experts, our maîtres fromagère. We are Mefroma, maître fromagère suisse, human craftsmen, passionate about cheese from Switzerland. You're muted, Edward. Yeah, I'm just sharing again the presentation. No problem. Yeah, that was a really nice video. And I hope that people uh, get from that, that it's a, uh, again, a small country, small village dairies. It's a community of uh, milk farmers and cheesemakers and dedicated employees that make me from uh, the company it is. So now I think we're gonna begin our cheese tasting. Uh, first of all, Mifroma uh, is a, like Edward said, we're not a producer of cheese, we're an ager of cheese. And so we have a full selection from AOP cheeses such as Gruyere, Emmentaler, Tete de Moine, and other cheeses such as a Switzerland Swiss, which is a Rhineless Swiss, uh, Raclette, Fondue, uh, Chocolate Fondue, Appenzeller, and some specialties like Alpenhorn, Blumenkass, a truffle cheese, and also a hop on top. Uh, and we'll get to a couple of those a little bit later, but we do carry a full range of cheeses from Switzerland. We work with over 100 and 120 independent cheesemaker that make, you know, maybe just one cheese, but we help support them to get products exported. So first we'll start with Gruyere, which is the, uh, it's our number one cheese. It's what we're known for. Uh, however, back when I started selling cheeses from Switzerland, Emmentaler used to outsell Gruyere about four to one, which is crazy when you look at those numbers because now Gruyere outsells Emmentaler by about <laughs> 10 to one. So it, it's really, really come on. So I know that you've got uh, two pieces there. One is the traditional five month Gruyere. There's one. Which that, that piece that Edward has there, these portions are cut directly from a wheel. So we take a full wheel of cheese. We, we, we cut these portions. It's all on a uh, unbelievable piece of machinery that can measure out the exact ounces. 
And then we also have the cavern reserve, which is aged a minimum of 11 months. Now Gruyere has been around since 1115, so quite a long time. Uh, again, the cows could only eat fresh grass, no silage. Uh, the traditional Gruyere is five months. And when we get to the cavern, that's really a hand selected piece of cheese. The, uh, the my, 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 I always screw this up because it's always a French language, but our master cheese maker, he actually goes in and hand selects each wheel of cheese because uh, Gruyere and all cheeses are, are living. And like uh, even human beings, some of us will be in great physical shape when we're 75 and others of us won't. And so he has to go in and we rely on him to pick the very best wheels that can be aged and still be at a perfection at 11 months and beyond. So that's a very, very important job that that uh, cheesemaker has. Uh, one thing that's really unique about Gruyere from Mifroma is that all of our Gruyere is aged in a cave where other exporters or agers, they age their cheese in a traditional cellar. Then after the five or six months period, they then transfer it to a cave for further aging. Uh, and this is, I think, very unique and important because the cheese never leaves its aging environment when it's at Mifroma. So it's always constant. And even though Switzerland is a small country, when you remove it from an aging cellar, put it on a truck, transfer it across this, this country, uh, and then bring it back, you're just moving it back and forth. Mifroma never does that. And what's even further unique is that we cut, wrap, age, and ship all of our Gruyere out of the same facility. So when the order is placed, we go down into the cave, pull it out, we put it on a truck and then transport it. So I think that's a very, very unique uh, selling point. It stays with the consistency of our Gruyere. So, uh, and we just introduced this year a shredded Gruyere cup, which has been tremendous for us. And what's been really unique about this item is that there are no anti-caking agents in it. So it's just 100% natural Gruyere cheese. So at uh, this point, if you would like to try the mild Gruyere first. Jim, while, while everybody's having a little chew there, um, mm -hmm. I have a question for you that's come in from Erica. How long has the packaging of cheese been, of the Gruyere been, been automated? Uh, for the, the, the new, when we first started, it was all like cryovac type machines. And this type of machinery with this film and everything has been around maybe 15 years. Okay, thank you. And our plant, by the way, is the first plant in Switzerland that is uh, use 100% renewable energy. And that we just accomplished uh, earlier this year. Very proud of that fact. Do you grate the cheese, the uh, Gruyere here, or do you, does it get grated over there? It's shredded in Switzerland. Okay. And those portions obviously are done in Switzerland as well. There's been a real, when we first started, while people are enjoying the cheese, uh, we always clean the rind in uh, Switzerland. We clean it before we ship it to the US. Now in Switzerland, it's uh, actually illegal to do that. Uh, it's all has to do with the AOP uh, regulations to prove that it is 100% true Gruyere from Switzerland. Uh, but the U.S., because years ago people didn't understand what a washed rind cheese was and, and what to do with it, we always shaved it. And so there has been a, a beginning trend, maybe the last two years or so, where we're starting to go to customers and say, hey, we'd like to keep the rind on the outside to, to show consumers exactly how true Gruyere should be 
And I think as consumers get more and more uh, educated, uh, they're starting to see that. Now, all of our wheels and quarter wheels, um, those are all shipped with the full natural rind on, as you can see in those pictures. It's just the portions and the Gruyere King Cut loaf that we shave. So did you tell us where the, this particular, uh, the younger Greer is was aged? It's aged in the exact same cave. It is, okay. Yep, same cave. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, hand selected to get those mm -hmm. ones that are gonna be aged uh, longer. So yeah, depending on the size of the dairy itself, we would collect the Gruyere between the months after its production and three months at the, at the latest. Uh, the reason we collect the cheese only after a full month is because during the, the first month, the cheese is salted and brushed more than once a week. So it starts by the daily treatment during the first week, then every two days, the second week, twice a week, the third one, and then it starts to be brushed and turned once a week. And that's where we bring that in our natural caves and then I mean, keep aging and treating them, and brushing them every week. The one Gruyere that I didn't mention that's on here is we actually uh, have an Alpage Gruyere. Uh, that Gruyere is made uh, up, up on the Alps. It's only made about five months, six months out of the year, depending on weather conditions. And we have uh, cheesemakers that make two wheels a day, believe it or not. You're talking about 100... 150 pounds of cheese a day, you know? So those guys are very dedicated to their craft. And uh, it's, it's a tremendous experience to watch that done. I know Mark Edwards wants to go there and uh, see it uh, see it for himself, so. Yeah, Alpage is, I love it. It's great. It's got a really unique taste because as the cows graze, each piece of cheese becomes a little bit different because mm -hmm. they're grazing on different flowers and herbs as they go. Yeah, there's Mark, he's in, I knew it. <laughs> no hesitation. So I hope everybody got to taste and enjoy that. I know uh, I really love our Cavern Reserve. I think it's really special and, and nice. It, uh, it really retains a lot of its moisture, even after being aged 11 months, that constant humidity keeps that cheese uh, so it doesn't dry out, if that makes makes sense. So, the wonderful thing about Gruyere too is that it's it's both a uh, just a really welcoming table cheese, but it's so cookable. Very much so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean that's kind of what put. Uh, more or less Gruyere on the map were a lot of these cooking shows that people, right? Uh, yeah, what do I do with it? And if you got time, I got a real funny story. I've seen a customer probably 25 years ago and he says, uh, you know, everybody's used, starting to use Gruyere. You know, I need a recipe for it, you know? And I'm thinking other than fondue, you know, and, and things like that. So I, I just thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll buy a bottle of white wine, a really nice one. And I just said, open up the piece of cheese, let it sit for a half hour, take a bite of cheese, sip a wine, finish, go until they're both finished. And uh, so, yeah, you don't necessarily just have to cook with it. It's an inviting table cheese as well. So Erica is suggesting uh, the, the, uh, the cave Greer with orange marmalade, which, which is fascinating because I think Marmalade is one of those challenging products. Tarte flambe with Gruyere for my clients at lunch. Okay. Oh. I don't know where you work, Cynthia, but I'm coming to visit. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's right to share that sort of information. <laughs> I bet you it was fantastic. It might be bribery, too. There may be bribery involved there. I could be bribed. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so is that it on Gruyere? Are there any other questions or? They may come in a little later. We're good. Once okay. we go through to this. At least, because I, maybe a last remark, because I have the two, the two pieces. We have the two pieces with us. If you would even look at the color of the paste, so like, like Jim was saying with the aging, 
what people tend to call salt crystal would appear, but even the color of the paste would look lighter on the cave age one versus the mild one. This has nothing to do with the aging process, but only with the grass fed seasonality. Respectively, the cavern now, which is 11 months and certainly 11 and more. So cows have been grass or fed during the winter. So less, a smaller variety of flowers and grass than during the summer. So the paste will tend to be a bit lighter. And, um, and so it, it just reflects another part of how natural and uh, authentic the, the cheese itself would be. Like Jim was mentioning, every lot is different, every wheel is different, but you, you could almost, yeah, find the back also in the, in the color of the paste, just depending on the seasonality and what type of grass and flowers did the cow eat. Just as a side remark. You got the next slide, Edward? Move on, yep. Should be there. Here we are. There we go. So fondue. Uh, I'm very proud of our fondue. Uh, we still make our regular fondue with AOP Emmentaler, AOP Gruyere, and Raclette cheese. Uh, a lot of people have uh, dummy down their fondue and just use uh, Swiss cheese, which could be any type of cheese from Switzerland, but we stick to an authentic recipe. Uh, so I'm very proud of the fact that we do that. Uh, when fondue was first introduced, it was what it was a way for the Swiss to use up like old bread. Like, what do we do with old bread that we have? And so somebody came up, hey, let's mix some wine and uh, some cheese together and that hence fondue was created. So uh, again, ours is made with those three cheeses, white wine and a uh, Kirsch brandy. So that is a, a traditional recipe. Uh, in addition to that, we introduced a microwavable uh, fondue. Uh, this is a little bit different in its percentages because when you take the original box fondue and you put it in a fondue pot and you cook it, the wine will evaporate the alcohol wheel. And so in a microwave, it doesn't have that chance to do that as quickly. And so there's gonna be a little bit lower amount of alcohol. I remember when we first introduced it, got the first samples, it was like, wow. <laughs> this was more wine than it was cheese. So, you know, it took an adjustment, but uh, we got it down. Uh, fondue uh, now needs, is required to be refrigerated. Uh, for 50 years, we sold it outside of refrigeration uh, with the same recipe, but food and drug decided uh, about 10 years ago, nine years ago that fondue, uh, in the United States needs to be refrigerated. So if you do go to Switzerland and you see this product not being refrigerated, it's the exact same product, just food and drug here wants it refrigerated. Uh, uh, originally I was like, oh man, we're gonna lose all of these uh, displays outside of refrigeration, our cells are gonna get hurt. But what has really happened is uh, by being refrigerated, the consumer, I think, is saying, hey, this is a higher quality product because it has to be refrigerated. It's not like those craft singles. This really needs refrigeration. And uh, our fondue sales, I would say, have uh, literally doubled in the last three years. Uh, I think people are doing more and more entertaining and fondue fits right in with that. And so I'm really proud of our, our fondue and that, we, that we're sticking to a, the original recipe and not uh, trying to cheapen it or lessen the quality that we, we stay firm to what we believe. And then just this last year, we introduced uh, chocolate fondue. Uh, this has been a, a nice success for us. Uh, Switzerland, you know, is known for the three cheeses, I mean, three C's, cheese, chocolates and clocks. And so uh, we said, hey, okay, we're not gonna be selling any Rolex watches or anything like that, but we can sell some chocolates. So 
we, we import this chocolate from Switzerland. We then have a sister company of ours uh, here in the United States that does the, the processing for us. And uh, this is 100% microwavable. Um, it comes in a plastic container. And so you just heat it for 30 seconds, stir it, and then continue that process. And the reason why we have those instructions like that is because we never want to uh, burn chocolate or overcook it. So we just do it very slowly. I think Edward, you have a picture or at least a piece of that. There you go. And uh, I apologize that we didn't get this sample out. I think Edward kept them all for himself. No, no, we did. We did. We did. <laughs> Most of the people should have received one. No, 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 we did. Oh, Everybody you just it was one. just me that didn't get one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, yeah. but but it comes in as a solid piece inside the, that cup. Yeah, very nice. And it's a nice, uh, rich, uh, dark chocolate. And it, it is fantastic. We've had some really good success with this. This item, however, does not require refrigeration. I know, Stephanie, it's, uh, it's, it's good. So and we carry this item year round. So we introduced it this year at Valentine's Day with much success. And uh, uh, we've had some very nice uh, pre-orders for the holidays for this item. Should I move on to the next slide? Please. Sticking with uh, the theme of heating cheeses, melting cheeses, uh, raclette cheese. Uh, Rackled has been around for a very long time. Uh, what happened years ago, uh, farmers used to make this, uh, cheese makers made this up on the Alps. And as a cheap food source for themselves, they would bring uh, potatoes for them to eat. So they would take a raclette cheese, uh, put it over uh, a, a actual fire out, outside, melt the cheese because it's high in butter fat and then scrape it onto their potatoes. And uh, everyone thinks that fondue is the national dish of Switzerland, but actually it is raclette. Raclette is the national dish of Switzerland. Uh, it's usually served with potatoes, uh, cornichons, white onions, and some usually cured meats. Uh, and they used to use a very big machine to melt this. And you'll see that at some restaurants where they, it holds half a wheel and then you just scrape it onto your dish. Uh, but people like Bosca have gotten pretty smart and said, hey, how about we make a machine that has individual uh, trays? And so these slices actually fit right into those trays. And uh, all... Three of these four varieties are available in the US in pre-sliced. The fourth one, which is the chili, uh, is just being introduced. It just was a little delay in getting that done. So we have a chili, a smoked, truffle, and the traditional. So four varieties of sliced raclette. And since we went to the sliced variety, our raclette sales have more than doubled. Uh, what that tells me is it's a convenience issue uh, that it's easier for the consumer to get it already sliced and ready to go versus maybe buying a portion and trying to get it to fit in a tray properly. Uh, now you don't necessarily need a raclette machine to use this. You can use a cast iron pan to melt it. Uh, you can use your broiler in the oven. I've served it for like appetizers where I'll just take a piece of uh, French bread, maybe a little olive oil on it, brush it, cut, uh, take that portion of raclette, break it in half and put it on top, broil it for a couple of minutes and it is, uh, uh, it's super appetizer. Uh, the packaging I think is very nice. We, it is made with a six month shelf life. So by the time it gets to the United States, it's got uh, five months on it goes through its distribution channels and uh, 
The other thing I think that the MIFROMA does that I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that they do this is they think, think of the retailer first. Um, when it comes to like shredded Gruyere, you know, instead of packing it 12 or 16 to a case, we pack it nine. Our regular fondue is packed 10 instead of 12. Uh, the flavored raclettes, because their volume is not going to be as quick as traditional raclette, we only pack those eight to a case versus 12. And so uh, even our portions, we pack eight to a case. So the whole mindset behind the Fromas philosophy is we want the consumer to have the freshest product available every time they come into the store and to not load up the retailer uh, with high inventory costs, we would rather have fresher product in the store than sell these large cases. So yeah, I, I, uh, all four of these flavors, I, I really, really enjoy. They're, they're, they're just fantastic. I think they did a super job on those. As far as bulk goes right now, we're only importing the bulk traditional raclette, both in wheels and squares. Uh, traditionally, raclette was always done in wheels, but because of the invention of these machines that hold square pieces, uh, they then said, well, we better make a square raclette. And so uh, this is making me hungry, this picture. <laughs> but uh, if there's any questions on raclette, that word means to scrape. And again, to, if you go into like these restaurants, if you get to bail, You'll see them, they hold half a wheel and people just, it just scrapes it. It's, it's, it's really meant for a interactive eating meal. It's great. You get one of these machines and everybody's got their own tray. They're moving it in and out. Uh, you can put meats on the top or vegetables for grilling. Uh, and it's, you know, Racklet, if you try it by itself, uh, which I hope you're, you're doing, and then maybe try a piece later melted just in your oven. You'll see that it takes on a completely different characteristic. And uh, yeah, I mm, wreck that. Yeah, and it's, it's really, really picked up in popularity. So uh, be sure and try those and let us know what you think. And then uh, Tetum One. So, Tetamuan's been around for uh, 800 years. The, the mean, the word Tetamuan actually translate to monk's head. So this cheese was first uh, created by monks. Uh, if you see the picture in the upper left, you see this beautiful flower. Well, when they first made this cheese, because it's, uh, it's, it's really a rich, uh, fragrant flavored cheese, uh, I know it's robust, it's got a very aromatic, uh, Switzerland likes to use the word spicy, but not in the term that, that the U.S. thinks of spicy, like hot, spicy means rich in flavor. And uh, because it is such a powerful cheese, they used to take a knife and shave it paper thin to eat it until uh, a gentleman invented this machine called a Giroll. And so it's got a little spindle and uh, you put it through the middle of the cheese with this curved blade that as you spin it around, it will create a rosette, uh, which is uh, really, I mean, it's beautiful. If you're doing any sort of uh, a tray for a party or anything like that, or I'll just- give it, I'll give it a try while, while you're talking, Jim. Okay, yeah, yeah. Keep your eye on Edward, he's going to- <laughs> Do it. This this is with a plastic machine called a, a Giroux. So you just turn it, spin it like that, and you get a beautiful rosette like that. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'll, I'll have to make sure that it tastes there. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that is a that's a really really nice cheese, and so. Uh, these, these are rolls you could buy online. They're usually, you know, anywhere from 25 to maybe $50. So they're, they're an expensive piece of machinery for one piece of cheese uh, that you can use on. So we, 
said, well, how about we come with uh, already shaved rosettes? And so uh, at the end of last year, we did a small test to see how it went. It went, went pretty well. And so we now have these rosettes that uh, have, they're made with a 120 day shelf life is all. And so it is a, a short shelf life because we wanna keep this thing fresh and everything. Uh, what we, again, what I really like we, that we did, it, you see it comes in this round circle and half of it, you can open up one half at a time. So you don't have to open up the entire package. So you can peel back one side, enjoy that, and then come back uh, later when you want to and open up the second side. So um, this is a very, very unique cheese. It's, uh, I haven't tasted anything like it. It's, it's really robust in, in, in flavor. And again, this is an AOP cheese, which means like Emmentaler and Gruyere, that you have to follow certain rules and regulations, even to what the cows eat and when they eat that in order to make these cheeses. Uh, Switzerland itself has 12 AOP cheeses. Jim, um, yes. this is Steph. Quick question, this is, this is for me. How many makers are there of Tete de Moine? That's... There, now I know the answers. There, there are six of those, uh, four are extremely small. We're talking about a production of 10 wheels a day. Mm. So in total and officially, there are six cheese makers, but I would say two are mainly representative. And obviously we're working exclusively with one of those. Thank you. Uh, for the, the small story about Monk's Head, translation and the history behind the cheese, there's two, two stories that try to be defended. One was saying that the cheese got its name because the way we shave it, it appearing and looking like a Monk's Head, board on the top. The order, which seems to be the most accurate story, is that while Monk's created and produced the cheese at the beginning, I don't know if I ever shared this story to you, Jim. Oh, yeah. Uh, and during the night, like they, they would go and try try to steal a piece of cheese without being seen and caught up. So in order to do so, they would shave the top of the cheese, and that would be the only way that no one would notice it. That's how they invented the way of consuming Mons Head cheese by shaving and shaving the cheese. Since that sneaky monks. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't get Nikki, caught. That's great. Sneaky <laughs> three smongs, you got it. And again, this is a raw milk cheese as well. It is. Wash rind and everything, yeah. I really think that by, you know, I think what me from is trying to do is say, okay, let's provide some convenience. So we got Gruyere shredded in Switzerland, no anti-caking agents. We got raclette now in slices as easier for the consumer to use. Now, Tete Moine, now we're gonna put those in a rosettes so the cons consumer can use them. And uh, like I said, if you put those on any holiday cheese tray, uh, charcuterie tray, whatever, they're gonna take a look at that and people are gonna say, am I supposed to eat that? Is that a flower? What is that? I mean, uh, yeah, it looks beautiful. Absolutely. All right, I'll move to the... <laughs> okay, and then the last cheese uh, for today is uh, the, the Blumenkass, which you can see here. And we just introduced this cheese uh, pretty much this year. At the end of last year, we, we started with it. So this cheese is from a single producer in Switzerland. So one guy makes it for us. Uh, and this... Cheese just recently won uh, a gold medal in the New York International Cheese Competition. So we're very, very uh, proud of the fact that we won that award. Uh, which really, one, the cheese is very beautiful. It's got flowers and herbs on it. And you can tell that those herbs and flowers permeate uh, into the cheese. So it's a mixture of flowers of uh, marigolds and roses uh, and juniper berries. It also has chives and savory mint. And so, I mean, 
just the aroma when you smell that cheese, it really is unique. And I think you really get a tremendous uh, a savory aspect when you, you sample this cheese. Uh, we're really, really proud of this cheese. It's, uh, we feel it's got a long ways to go. Oh God, look at this, Cynthia. I will take that recipe. Yeah. So this is a, uh, a pasteurized milk cheese. It comes in about a 14 pound wheel. Uh, like I said, it's very beautiful. I mean, it is, uh, I don't know if the camera does uh, justice to this, but if for everybody who has it, it uh, like I said, the flowers, uh, what's funny is last year, edible flowers has become a pretty big deal. And so uh, there was a shortage of edible flowers, if you could believe it or not. So um, we really had to slow down our introduction of this due to the fact that there weren't enough flowers uh, on the market. But uh, we've since got that taken care of. And so we're ready to go out and sell this, this beautiful cheese. It, it does look absolutely beautiful. I, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Or do you Have you ever thought about or do you sell the full wheel? <clears throat> or or half wheels or something instead of uh yes uh actually this was just a portion that we did uh our, ourselves to get cryovac you know so we could get it out to people but it is sold 100 percent right now in full wheels okay and we working about uh, com having that into quarters or, or converted into smaller portions yeah, because we know this is a unique cheese. It's very special. And so we're going to work on, like I said, doing either half wheels or quarter wheels. I like it. <laughs> I, I, I love Erica. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to see how other people enjoy uh, the same cheese as you do in different formats. And it just gives you a new idea on how to do things, you know. It's such a dramatic looking cheese. I could see it also being a, a centerpiece at a holiday, you know, cheese yeah. plate. It's really gorgeous. I mean, we this cheese, well, this is what I really love and enjoy is, you know, we got this cheese and we got another cheese called Alpenhorn that uh, uh, are from a single producer. It's, you know, one guy who makes this cheese or one family. And I'll just share a funny story with the Alpenhorn when we first introduced it. Uh, I was in Switzerland. I fell in love with it. I thought, oh, this is a great cheese. And I said, I'm going to go sell this in the U.S. And the guy goes, oh, okay, okay. So I go out and show it to a couple of customers. And they go, okay, yeah, we're all on board. And call the guy. And he goes, oh, he says, I can only give you, you know, 800 pounds a month. And I went, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just that they're so small. Uh, you know, 800 pounds is a lot to them, you know, but for, you know, what we do in the U.S., sometimes that doesn't equate. So, you know, they have to gear up and, and get ready when you want to, you know. So we said, okay, well, let's start with 800 now. And then in six months, which is the minimum aging, we can then bump that up. But it's just fun to watch that growth and, you know, these people are so proud of the fact that their cheese, which is made in this maybe a small village of, you know, 500 people, ends up in the United States of America. I mean, we take it for granted maybe, but for them, it is, they're very, very proud of the fact that the cheese that they made ends up over in our country. Want to move to? I think that yeah. was last last cheese and last part of the cheese tasting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if there's any additional questions, remarks, 
who so I'm just fascinated by the flowers. I could just like who is out there picking these tiny flowers and stuff. That is an amazingly precise job. Oh yes. But there there is someone who's uh, there is a there's actually a group of people or an industry that that does edible flowers in Switzerland. Exactly. So it's um, the flowers are not all, and so it's uh, edible flowers and herbs. Mm -hmm. They're not all coming from Switzerland. It's a mix from Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. And uh, um, I think, like one of the people comment in the chat, uh, when we developed and uh, this cheese, all our goal was to find the perfect balance between bringing some freshness, some taste, and remaining the best balance we could get with the cheese with, like Jim said, it's still six months age has some strong and robust body and characters. And once we stick to the defined herbs and flowers mix, the issue was to, to keep this constancy in, in terms of flowers. So yes, when, when we faced the supply issue, it's almost two years ago now, a year and a half, um, we, we were pushing and challenging some of the herbs buyer or alpine mix buyers <laughs> to make sure that they stick to what what the initial goals and commitment was. So yes, we I, just, do have, I have a vision of people running around the Alps and you yes, know and you say, have, like, you the hills are alive that. kind of moment. Like, yeah, <laughs> like Appen Cedar. So the the bride we're using to brush the Appen Cedar. Uh, supposed to be a secret mix of herbs as well and alpine herbs and uh, and it's yeah it's a components of 28 different herbs and uh, and yes yeah, so it, it includes a, a pretty large mix of things where it has to match with the specifications and stephanie to your point years ago we had a different cheese that was herbed on the outside and we got to uh to go to switzerland and yeah, you watch. There's people out there hand picking these herbs for the cheese, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But yeah, just on a you know on a hillside, and they had their each of their herbs, probably twelve different herbs that they were growing and hand picking them. Sounds like a good job to me, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, the view's um, great. Uh, if anybody has any other questions, this is your moment because we are up against uh, five o'clock right now. Um, we would love to hear any any questions now. Otherwise, I'm going to to say goodbye. I think everybody is munching. And so. you can always meet you, reach us via email. We'll get back to you as soon as possible with any questions that, that you have. And anything that, that is maybe just pertains to you that you want to ask, you can send it to us and we'll be sure and get you a response. So thank you all for coming. Um, as usual, this was wonderful and it makes me very much want to be in Switzerland. So I'm Jim, when you're ready to have that trip, Mark and I are apparently signing up number one and two. Okay. Uh, all right. We got it. <laughs> thank you very much. Sam. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. All, all right. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.